the premiere performance of the new comedy series, My Son Jeep. But before we begin, there's a gentleman standing beside me that I'd like all of you to meet. Dr. Robert Allison of Grove Falls. Hello. Uh, there's nothing very unusual about being a, a doctor in a small town, even if you're a widower with two children and a housekeeper running your life for you. But uh, when one of your youngsters is a boy, and uh, a ten-year-old boy at that, uh, things sometimes get a little uh, confused. Uh, for instance, uh, who would think that I'd get involved with a substitute teacher of grade B? Well, I didn't actually uh, get involved, but, you know, come to think of it, we both did. Me and my son, Jeep. Yes, it's My Son Jeep, the warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, starring Donald Cook as Doc, and introducing young Martin Houston as wonderful, unpredictable 10-year-old Jeep Allison. It uh, started one Friday afternoon. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. I was in my office, which actually is, is part of our house. It was a nice, uh, quiet afternoon, which meant that Jeep wasn't home from school yet. And my last patient had just gone, and then um, uh, somebody knocked on the door. Come in. Oh, hi, Peggy. Come on in, hon. Are you busy, Father? Oh, just writing out this prescription for Mrs. Perry's indigestion. Oh, why, is this a professional visit? Uh, stick out your tongue and say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo." Oh, honestly, Father, may I remind you that I'm 13 years old? Well, thanks for the reminder. You couldn't knock off a couple of years, could you? The way you and Jeep are growing up, they're going to start calling me old Doc Allison. Oh, Father. Hey, what's this father business? Don't you call me Pop anymore? It is not dignified. And from now on, I want to be called Marguerite. Marguerite? Well, what's wrong with Peggy or Margaret? It's too ordinary. And while we're on the subject, you ought to make Jeep use his right name. Jeffrey is a whole lot nicer. More dignified, huh? It certainly is. After all, how do you think I like having people call my brother Jeep? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would be pretty, pretty degrading. And that's not all. Jeffrey is in love with his teacher. Oh, nonsense. A ten-year-old boy? Oh, Father, don't be naive. Oh, I didn't know I was. <laughs> and you're getting naiver all the time. Now, Eva. <laughs> we were discussing you just the other day. Who's we? You know Mary Patricia Pearson. Well, I never heard of her. Have I missed anything? Oh, Father! <laughs> well, she's just the most popular girl in school. Everybody knows her. Uh, I guess I'm just not in the social swim. <laughs> anyway, we were discussing you. Well, that's nice. Mary Patricia figured out that it's because you're a widower. What's because? But you've just forgotten all about love and things like that. Oh, well, I haven't uh, forgotten. <laughs> well, then why can't you understand that Jeffrey is in love with his teacher? Well, since you put it that way, I guess I can. Well, who's the teacher? Oh. Hey, you don't mean Miss Kohlhauser. It's a substitute teacher. Her name's Miss Miller. Good looking. Well, what has that got to do with it? Well, quite a lot, they tell me. <laughs> Never mind, honey. How'd you find out, anyway? Mary Patricia Pearson. Boy, she gets around, doesn't she? Jeffrey even likes staying after school now. Well, that's a bad sign. Still, it's one way of keeping him interested in his schoolwork. Well, aren't you going to speak to him about it? Yeah, when he starts losing his appetite, then I'll worry. <laughs> Miss Miller? Why, Jeffrey, what are you doing out here? School's been out for half an hour. Well, I'm just waiting around. <laughs> well, I thought you boys couldn't wait to get away from school every day. Well, I was waiting to see you. That's very sweet of you, Jeffrey. I wish you were my regular teacher. <laughs> You'll be glad to see Miss Kohlhauser when she gets back next week. No, I won't. You won't? No, you're prettier. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. What for? 
It isn't hard to be prettier than Miss Kohlhauser. <laughs> oh. I didn't mean you aren't pretty anyway. You are. <laughs> well, let's change the subject, shall we? Okay. Are you married? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not. Then why don't you come to my house for supper tonight? I don't know what we're having. Uh, Miss Bixby, she's our housekeeper. She's a good cook, so why don't you come? Whoa, wait a minute, Jeffrey. Well, will you? <laughs> I'd love to come, but does your family know that you're inviting me? No, but Pop won't mind. Your father's Dr. Allison, isn't he? Uh-huh. Well, don't you think you ought to ask him first? What for? I can bring somebody home if I want to. <laughs> well, I don't like barging in on people. Don't you want to come? Well, of course I do, She but... swung about six o'clock. We'll be waiting for but you. But, Jeff... <sighs> oh, dear. <laughs> I guess that's what's known as getting swept off your feet. <laughs> Next patient, please. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, doctor. I want you to sit down. Thank you. Ah, what seems to be the trouble? <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't know quite how to explain it, doctor. Well, can you describe the symptoms? What? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not sick. Well, then what are you doing here? Oh, not that you're not welcome. <laughs> Well, my name is Barbara Miller, Doctor. I'm Jeffrey's teacher. Substitute teacher, that is. Oh, you're the one. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, well, uh, well, nothing. Is Jeep, I mean, is, uh, is Jeffrey in, in some sort of trouble? Oh, no. No, he's the best behaved boy in the class. He is? Mm -hmm. Well, it sure performs miracles, doesn't it? Well, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. I was referring to love. To what? Well, I was just thinking out loud. Now, um, <laughs> what, what can I do for you, Miss Miller? Oh, well, Jeffrey invited me to supper tonight. Wonderful. I mean, we, we'd be glad to have you, but uh, aren't you a little early? It's only 4.30. <laughs> I didn't come to eat now. I only wanted to make sure that it was all right with you. Oh, 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 it is. Yeah. Well, I better run along. Jeffrey said about 6 o'clock. That's right. Uh, do you have to leave? I don't have any more patience. <laughs> I'd like to stay, but I should go home and change my clothes. I came here right from school. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, by the way, I think it'd be better not to tell Jeffrey I came by. He might resent my checking up. Well, don't worry. I won't say a thing. Then I'll see you at six. Mm-hmm. Well, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> I wonder if I ought to shave again tonight. <laughs> I hope you won't mind, but uh, there'll be a guest for supper tonight. Well, I don't mind, but you could let me know before this. It's 5.30 already. Well, I should have told you sooner, but I... Well, I had a few things to take care of. Oh, well. Say, ain't that your new sport jacket? What are you doing wearing that to supper? Well, listen, it's mine. I can wear it if I want to. <laughs> it's all right with me, only you never did it before, and I... You... Why, you shaved again. Well, what of it? Well, who was coming to supper anyway, the mayor? Hi, Pop. Hi, Miss Bixby. Listen, everybody's got to get dressed up tonight. We're having company. Well, who'd you invite, Jeep? Her name's Miss Miller, and she's my substitute teacher, and she's swell. Well, it looks like we've got to put our best foot forward, doesn't it, Miss Bixby? Still say you could let me know sooner. I just hope nobody gets sick. I'd hate to get a call in the middle of supper and have to rush off. Gosh, Pop. Why do you want to be a doctor anyway? Uh, sometimes I wonder. Heck, Tommy Barton's father only works five days a week, and he makes a lot of money. Doing what? He reads meters for the gas company. <laughs> Does he make more money than you do, Pop? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Then I'm going to work for the gas company, because I want to make a lot of money, too. Oh, are you planning to get married? No, I'd have to finish grade school first. <laughs> Another piece of pie, Miss Miller? Oh, thanks, no, Doctor. Peggy, or I mean, uh, Marguerite? I've had sufficient, thank you, Father. But not at all, Miss Allison. Uh, how about you, Jeep? Uh-uh. Only one piece of pie? Hey, you sick? No. Well, something's wrong. You haven't said a single word since we sat down to eat. How could I? Gosh, I invited Miss Miller to supper, and you've been doing all the talking. Oh, I have. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. 
Okay, I won't say another word all evening. Uh, well, what grade are you in, Peggy? 7A. You already know what grade Jeep's in, and I'm through school, so that takes care of that. <laughs> Pick another subject. <laughs> all right, I will. Jeffrey, how did you get the nickname of Jeep? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, go on. Tell Miss Miller. You tell her. You said I was talking too much. Oh, for goodness sakes, I'll tell her. When he was little, Father took him to a parade and he saw a Jeep. And then he started pretending he was a Jeep, running around saying, Get out of my way, I'm a Jeep, I'm a Jeep. So, everybody started calling him that. And I think it's perfectly ridiculous because his name is Jeff. And I think it's perfectly ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that. We've got company, remember? Well, she's always acting like she's so grown up. You see what a poor widower has to put up with, Miss Miller. Mm, I can see how tough things are for you. Do you think I'm head man around here? Don't you believe it? I, I run a poor third. No, fourth. I forgot Mrs. Bixby. Now, what about me? Oh, that was a wonderful meal, Mrs. Bixby. Oh, you, uh... You really liked it? Yes. It's the best I've had since I came to Grove Falls. Oh, you think my meatloaf's good. You, you get your Jeep to invite you over when we're having fried chicken. Uh, sure. Come on over. There you are. You've got your invitation. Now all we need is the chicken. <laughs> all she needs is a cup of coffee. You pour it for her, Doc. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I was just wondering, Miss Miller, is there any chance of you getting a, a regular teaching job in Jeep school? Mm, well, the list is pretty long. The why don't you come to work here? You always said you wanted somebody to work in the office, Pop. Here's your chance. How about it, huh? Wouldn't you like to have Miss Miller work for you? Wouldn't you like to work for Pop, Miss Miller? Hey, 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 wait a minute. Don't you like the idea? Well, I like the idea fine. Uh, there's just one hitch. We can't afford it. Why not? Because we've only been here since last year, and it takes time to build up a practice. You couldn't ask Miss Miller to work for nothing, could you, Miss Miller? <laughs> Leave me out of this. I know. You could treat her free when she gets sick. <laughs> well, she still has to eat, silly, and have some place to stay. She can move in with us. How about it, Pop? Uh, Jeep, I'm so pleased that you'd like me to come work here, but well, you're sort of putting your father on the spot, aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. Of course, we've never even asked Miss Miller what she thinks of the idea, but suppose we leave it at this. If I can ever build up my practice, and if Miss Miller is available, then we'll ask her if she'll come and work for us. Now, that's a promise. Oh, boy! All we have to do is wait for more people to get sick. <laughs> hey, Peggy, you asleep? What are you doing still up? Gee, I wish there was some way of finding more patients for Pop. What good would that do if they don't pay? What do you mean? I heard Father say some of his patients don't hardly ever pay their bills. They let them go for ages. Why doesn't Pop make them pay? It's got something to do with uh, uh, ethics. Well, what's that? Never mind, that's what it is. But gosh, if people owe you money, you've got to go out and ask them for it. A doctor is not supposed to. Why not? <laughs> ethics? Say, why couldn't I do it? Do what? Get the bills out of Pop's desk and collect the money myself. Then we'll be rich and Miss Miller can come to work for Pop. Oh, go to bed, G. And if he needs new patients, I'll get him some of those, too. In just a moment, you'll go back to join in more of the adventures of my son, Jeep. How well do you know the history of your army? For example, do you know when the first Army Medical Corps was established? The actual work of the Army's medics is almost as old as the Army itself, going back as it does to the time when our country first became United States. In 1789, for instance, the first Congress appointed Richard Allison of Pennsylvania as surgeon to a corps of 700 men. For the following nine years, Congress appointed medical officers for individual regiments, and in 1798, James Craik of Virginia was named to the newly authorized post of Physician General. But it wasn't until 1818 that the actual medical corps was organized with Joseph Lavelle named as Surgeon General. Thus another page was added to the history of your United States Army. And now, back to Act Two of My Son Jeep, starring Donald Cook and featuring Martin Houston and Lynn Allen. <laughs> The 
next morning, it was a bright, sunshiny Saturday, uh, we were all in the kitchen finishing our breakfast. More toast, Jeep? Uh-uh. You mean no thank you, Mrs. Bixby, don't you? That's what he said. A pop? Hmm? You did say we could have Miss Miller here if business picks up, didn't you? Boy, you sure got a one-track mind. Well, didn't you? Yes, I did. Then don't worry. Business is going to pick up. Is that a promise? Uh-huh. Well, that takes a load off my mind. It's nice to have one optimistic person in the family. And now that you've uh, reassured me about our future patients, I'd better get started taking care of the ones we've got. I'll see you later. I'd better get started, too. Doing what? You know, what I told you about last night. Hey, you want to help me? I should say not. Of all the silly ideas. You just wait, Peggy Allison. It is not silly. Well, Father might not like it. He will so. When he sees all the money I bring home, he's going to thank me. Well, hello there, little boy. Hello. Are you Miss Wilson? I certainly am, and who might you be? I'm Chief Allison, and you owe us $95. (laughs) What? You owe us $95. Well, what on earth are you talking about, and who's us? My father, Dr. Allison. Well, I never heard of such a thing in all my life. The idea, a doctor dunning his patients and sending his own child. You owe it to us, don't you? Well, well, yes, but... Then why don't you pay it? (laughs) Young man, I am not accustomed to having people ring my doorbell and ask for money. I pay my bills by check the first of every month. I guess you forgot to pay this one, huh? (laughs) Well, well, you march right back to your father and tell him that he will be paid in the customary manner. Thirty-five dollars, That's right, mister. You know, I'm glad to see you, young fella. You are? Most of the others acted kind of mad. Hmm. Well, not me. I won't explain why I haven't paid that bill. I've been meaning to write Doc a letter. You know how it is with letters. Oh, sure. You see, a couple of weeks after your dad fixed up that blood poisoning I had, I got laid off at the plant. Gee, can't you get another job? Oh, I'm going back to work next week, and I'll pay your father as soon as I can. Oh, that's all right. If you're too poor. Uh, Now, wait a minute. After all, you do have to eat. I am eating. I'll just tear up your bill. You will not. I ain't never asked for charity. You go back and tell your father I insist on paying him every cent I owe. Hey, mister. If I give you an ad now, will it be in the paper this afternoon? Yep. I got it wrote out. Uh Uh-huh. Here. Uh, Can you read it? Uh, Let's see. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> What's so funny? Is uh, this your idea? Sure. Uh, don't you think you ought to ask this uh, Dr. Allison first? Supposed to be a surprise. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> kind of think it will be, Sonny. I'll tell you something else. If I had my way, I'd put this on the front page. <laughs> Grove Falls Hospital. Dr. Haskell, one moment, please. I'll connect you. Well, hello there, young man. Hello. Are you here to visit a patient? Mm Mm-mm. I want to find out if you have any extra work around here. Work? (laughs) You mean for you? No. For my father. He's a doctor. Oh? See, we need money, so if you have some work for him, doctor's work, it'd help us out. What's your father's name? Dr. Robert Allison. He's a very good doctor, too. You don't have to worry. So if you have any operations or... Well, uh, right now, I'm afraid we don't have any. Oh. Well, if you ever do, will you please let him know? We certainly will. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. Ninety-four. And here's a $10 bill. How much is ninety-four and ten, Miss Miller? A hundred and four. A hundred and four dollars. That's how much I collected. Gee, but I've never heard anything like this in all my life. I don't know what to say. Gosh, I thought you'd be proud of me. But you act like I did something wrong. Well, that's a moot point. What's moot? Never mind, dear. I I am proud of you. Oh, I did other things, too. Oh, I know I shouldn't ask. But what else did you do? I put an ad in the paper. An ad? What kind of an ad? I made it up myself. Uh, Here, look. 
Oh, no. I did something wrong. Huh? Oh, yes. You're right. I should have made the ad bigger. <laughs> Now, remember, Jeep, don't say a word. When we go into your father's office, you let me handle the whole thing. Yes, Miss Miller. And I don't think I'd better tell him everything all at once, either. Well, here we are. There you are, young man. What have you been up to? <laughs> Not supposed to say anything. Miss Miller said she'd say it. Oh, hello. Hello. I don't know whether I'm going or coming. You, you don't know what's been happening. Yes, I do. There must have been two dozen phone calls from people yelling about me sending out a young boy to collect my bills. At first, I didn't even know what they were talking about, but now I... I d Jeep. Yes, Pop? I want a complete explanation, and I want it now. Is it all right if I tell you, Doctor? Well, I don't care who tells me as long as I find out. Well, I think you'd better sit down first. What for? Well, it's... Uh... Uh, there are a few things you don't know. Oh? Well, okay, I'm sitting. Has, um, has anyone called you from the hospital yet? No, why? Well, it, it seems that... Oh, dear, I don't know how to tell you. That's probably a patient. We'll come back some other time, huh, Miss Miller? You stay right where you are. Come in. Dr. Allison? Go in the other room and take off your shirt. I am not a patient. I am here to discuss certain unethical practices which have come to my attention. Well, who, who, who are you? I'm Paul Haskell, chief resident physician at the Grove Falls Hospital. I'm, uh, I'm glad to meet you, Doctor. You may not be when you've heard what I have to say. Well, won't you sit down? I prefer to stand. You don't mind if I sit down? I don't care if you... <laughs> I mean, go right ahead. Now, Doctor, I hope I'm a broad-minded man. But when a physician has the unmitigated gall to solicit work from a hospital... Well, who was the physician? Oh, no, 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 don't tell me. And sending your own child around to do the soliciting for you. Oh, no. That's what I was going to tell you. Well, I, I don't believe I've... I've met this young lady. Uh, Miss Miller, Dr. Haskell. Well, how do you do? Not too well, thank you. And this fine young lad? This fine young lad is the one who did the soliciting. Oh, oh! <clears throat> well, now, I, I don't want to be stuffy about this. I know what it's like for a young doctor to try to build up a practice in a new community, but this is not the way to build it. Uh, Dr. Haskell, I know this is going to sound crazy, but until you walked in that door, I didn't know a thing about this. Oh, come now. No, no, honest. You see, my son got the idea that we were practically starving to death, so he went out to see what he could do about raising some money. You mean... You mean to sit there and tell me that that little child thought this whole thing up by himself? Oh, sorry, doctor. Come in. Mrs. Wilson. Well, you may be surprised to see me, Doctor, but you're not half as surprised as I am to be here. Now, I'll admit I was angry when your little boy came to my house asking for money. What? But after he left, I got to thinking. Now, he was right. I had let your bill go too long. And when I realized how badly you must need the money, well, I just got an attack of remorse. So, <laughs> here's what I owe you. $95. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, you can mail me the receipt. Is everybody crazy? <laughs> you mean to tell me that that little boy also runs around collecting money? I'm afraid so. Look, Pop, I collected $104, see? And when it's 95, that makes... How much, Miss Miller? Uh, $199. $199. Dr. Haskell, what can I say? Don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> you realize that your little boy here did what half the doctors in town would do if they had the nerve, go out and collect money from their patients? They would? Of course. Of course, it isn't ethical to run around soliciting business from hospitals. Uh, you know how the medical profession frowns upon advertising. <laughs> yeah, but after all, you could have done worse. You could have put an ad in the papers. Oh. <laughs> uh, my, my son would never do a thing like that. <laughs> hey, Pop, I think I... Uh... Oh, excuse me, Doctor. Hey, Dr. Allison, uh, who's this? What? Uh, what are you talking about? I did not. You, you got the wrong number. Who was that? Oh, some crackpot asking me if I'm the doctor who advertised in the newspaper. Gee. Yes, Pop. Wait a minute. 
I'll handle this. Now, young fella, I want a straight answer. Hey, don't you yell at my son. And don't you yell at me. Doctor, oh, since when have you been advertising in the newspapers? Uh, let me see that. Oh, here it is, right on page eight in tonight's paper. I have now seen everything. Here, read this. Feel bad? Need an operation? <laughs> <laughs> Call up Dr. Robert Allen. Oh, no. <laughs> There's more. Best doctor in town. Special low price if you bring the whole family. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell you. I think I'll go outside and play. Jeep, you stay right where you are. Pop. Hmm? Won't you put your paper down? I want to talk to you. Okay. It's down. Gosh. You're not still mad at me, are you? It's been almost a week now. I'll tell you something, Jeep. I got so busy straightening things out and explaining everything to all my patients that, well, I just didn't have time to stay mad. Then everything's all right? By the skin of our teeth, yeah. But I mean between you and me. Oh, sure it is, son. I, I even learned something from all this. You did? So many of those people you called on started paying their bills that I realized that if I had somebody to take care of the office and send the bills out regularly, well, people would pay them. Gee! Does that mean we can ask Miss Miller to come to work for us? Yeah, I guess it does. Can I call her and tell her? I've already done it. I was going to save it for a surprise. She starts work tomorrow morning. Golly, that's swell! Yeah. I don't know how, but it all turned out all right. I even got a call from Dr. Haskell asking me to have lunch with him. That's good, huh, Pop? Uh-huh. Uh, just uh, one thing, old boy. What? If you get the impulse again to help me, please, uh, think twice. But, Pop... I did think twice, and it still seemed like the right thing to do. Then from now on, Jeep, uh, think three times. My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Music selection by John Geller. Tonight's cast included Lynn Allen as Barbara Miller, Joan Laser as Peggy Allison, and Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby, with Wendell Holmes, Ethel Wilson, Ellen Leslie, Louis Van Ruten, and young Martin Houston as 10-year-old Jeep. Starring in the role of Dr. Allison is one of America's finest comedians and most versatile performers, Donald Cook. And now, this is Fred Collins inviting you to be with us again next week, same time, same station, for the next delightful episode of My Son Jeep. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.